Hey everybody, Garage King here, and on today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to top up your AC system using just a can and one of these tools. There's a few things you gotta know before we do it. A few little checks, because I don't want you to damage your cars, but before we get into that, let's just roll a really quick intro, and then we're gonna to get to it. So we're in our vehicle right now. You can see the AC is all the way cold. Recirculation, AC, there you go. We got it running and that is the current temperature. So it is, uh, it is really, really hot inside this car. Now it's not just hot inside the car, but it's also very hot outside and that's gonna make it more difficult to fill, but we can still get it done. So first thing before we recharge our AC, we wanna see if uh, the compressor turns on and off. So we're gonna listen for something. You can actually hear the fan there. I'll do it again. So what that means is we have a little bit in the system, but probably next to nothing. So we have our tool and we have our can. Now on all vehicles, you just have to find the ports. On this Honda Civic in particular, uh, the bigger one is the low side with the L and the smaller one is the high side with the H. Uh, we're going to be using 134A in this vehicle. Uh, that's what the vehicle came with from the factory. When you fill the vehicle, you'll see that you always charge through the low side and that's how these, how these little kits come. They always come through the low side. Uh, there's two ways to do it. Some people just uh, put it in without the engine running, but it's always better to put it uh, in with the engine running. Uh, first, you want to check your compressor front there. I'm going to throw up an arrow and if it is spinning, that's a good sign. That means your compressor is working. It's just really, really low on... Uh, on refrigerant. Now, if it's not spinning, there's two things that could be happening. Either there's absolutely nothing in your system, or your system's actually full, but one of the sensors is gone, and that's why it's not running, and that's a different issue altogether. So today, we're going to just focus on if your system is low, we're going to top it up. And in my case, you can see there's the compressor. It is actually spinning, so that's a good sign. That means it's just very, very low, but everything is working. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you very quickly how to top it up. So one of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to overfill the system. So if we zoom in here, we can see Honda Civic. There we go. We can see it takes about a pound of 134A. So this can is 12 ounces. Now there's 16 ounces in a pound. So if we put two cans in, we would really overfill it and we could damage it. So we only want to do one can. Now here's the thing. If your system is already blowing cold, you don't know how much is in there. Just putting one can in might actually damage your system. So the only time you should ever be really refilling it is when it's not cold at all and there is no cooling because at that point you probably only have an ounce uh, in your system and you'd be safe to add uh, one can. So it's very important whatever vehicle you have to look it up just so you know uh, that you're not gonna overfill it. So now I'm gonna show you how to hook it all up. We wanna make sure we purge this because this is full of air and we don't want this air going into the AC system because air in the AC system will make it warm. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hook it up and I'm gonna show you how to purge this very quickly just to get rid of any extra air that's in there. So we're gonna take our can uh, just like so and then what we're gonna do before we pierce the can, we're gonna make sure that our piercing needle okay, right here, is backed all the way out. You wanna make sure it's all the way out, turn it counterclockwise, just to make sure it doesn't pierce the can. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw the can on. There you go, I got a good seal, the can is screwed on. Now we're not going to pierce it, we're gonna now connect it to the car. All right, so we're gonna take off our low side port right here, if I can, there we go. So I've taken that off, don't lose it, put it somewhere where you won't lose it. So I'm just gonna remember that mine's right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our can. There you go. And you can see there's our pressure. Now, this is the important uh, step. So now what we wanna do is we wanna vent out any air that's in there. So there's not gonna be much, so all we're gonna do is loosen the can just a wee bit, just till we hear a little bit of air and then just tighten it, not much. And that's it. So that was next to nothing. You saw nothing even squirted out of there, nothing like that. So we know just that little poof, that's all we need. That's it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the car. You're gonna see the gauge go right down because it's almost empty. And then when the car's running, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pierce the can with this and then we're gonna throttle it in uh, to keep it in the blue zone. Okay, so we're gonna start the car and turn the AC on to max. There you go. 
all the way cold and just crank it up, turn it hot. And now let's go back outside and fill it up. And now that we've started the vehicle up, if we look at the gauge, it was at 80 before you can see. Now we're around 15 pounds. So we have almost nothing in the system. Uh, it should be a lot higher than this. So I'm just gonna put the camera on the tripod. And then what we're gonna do is pierce the can and I'm gonna show you how to throttle it in. Uh, so you get a good All right, So you should be able to see the can there and then you can see at the gauge there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this part down until I can feel it hit the can. There you go, I can feel it actually hit the can. Now I'm gonna pierce the can, I'm turning it. You can see this has changed. There you go, I've pierced the can already. And now the needle's actually continually going through the can. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it off a little bit. There you go. And now what we're gonna do is control it in just like this. There you go, and, and I just turned it, you saw barely nothing. There you go, just a wee little bit. And you want to keep it in the blue zone, which is 30 to 60 pounds. Actually, this one is about 25 to 55. So I like to usually charge around 40 pounds, or you can see it's sucking it in. I'm going to open this up a little bit more. There you go. You can see I've opened it more. I hold the can upside down to get a good charge, because if you hold it right side up, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you don't get a good charge. There you go. We're going to let a little bit more in. The problem when the can's upside down is you get the fluid coming in. So it charges faster. I'm used to doing it with the gauges all the time, but with this, with these things, I guess vertical sometimes is better because then you don't uh, you don't lose any. So we can keep this going like this. As long as we got our pressure there, that's okay. There you go. We want to keep it in the blue, and you can see I don't I really don't have to move it much, and I can really just play with that pressure on the gauge. And look how much I'm moving it. Barely anything. And look at the gauge. So we're gonna to wanna to keep it closer to the top around 50 pounds. This way we're not here all day. And the other thing you wanna do, you might be tempted to go inside and see how things are looking, but whenever I charge or, or someone's charging from the can, you should always stay with the can because if something moves or something gets bumped, the last thing you wanna do is have this thing go wide open and then a ton of pressure will come in and it, and it might damage something. So you always wanna supervise the can until you're done. And I can still feel the can's kinda of heavy. Oh, there we go. And I can actually feel the cans getting cold. So a lot of it's coming out. And I'll probably speed up this part of the video because it's gonna get boring and no one's gonna sit here watching me stand for five minutes. But I'll put the elapsed time in just so everyone knows how long it did take for it to do it. And you can see we're starting to equalize now because if I open up the valve, you see it doesn't go much higher now. It doesn't really matter. I can go back and I can tell there's the can. And then I can open it up. And that's all that's uh, coming out. So you can see it's starting to, uh, equalized but I can still feel the can here it's still about half of the can is left but one of the reasons why it's taking so long to fill up today too is it's very very hot outside so once again what we can try doing is putting it upside down and then it'll usually fill a little faster but you got to watch just to make sure the valve doesn't leak when you do that so if I hold it upside down like this And there, we're fine there, nothing's leaking out, we're fine there, so we can leave it upside down. We're actually just a wee bit over, but there's the 60 pounds, so I'm just gonna leave it, I don't wanna touch the valve. And you can see the needle's actually moving around a little bit, and that's good, that means it's flowing inward, and that's the pressures, uh, the pressure differential when you're crossing the, the gauge. And there you can see the needles coming down. So without even touching the can, because the needles come down so much, I'm gonna guess the can is pretty much empty. And I can feel, there you go, the can is actually empty. So we've emptied out the can. So that's great. And I can tell now because the compressor is actually sucking it right down. So I can't feel anything left in the can. It feels like it's just an empty, empty can. Now, next question, how do we get this off? 
So I found the best way to get the can off is just to close the valve on the can and then pop it off with the engine running because when the engine's running, you're gonna have lower pressure. As soon as you stop the engine and it equalizes, you're gonna have higher pressure. And I'll show you a shot of the can so you can actually see what's left in the can. Unfortunately, you're always gonna have a little bit left over. You can see if I open up the vent, we can add a little air in there, but um, a little bit. If I open up the can, you can see there's almost nothing. I don't, I don't even know if the camera could pick that up. Unfortunately, you're always gonna have a little bit left over, and the reason for that is the pressure in the can is less than the pressure in the car, so there's just no way to put that last little bit in the car. Now, once you've taken uh, the can off, if you remember up here, I had my little low, uh, low side here, so we're just gonna make sure we put that back on, just like so. All right, so we're heading back over to the vehicle, and we can see I guess because it took so long to film, our thing is off, but I can definitely tell it's nice and cold, so I'm gonna press it. And there we can see 67 Celsius, or 67 Celsius, would oh, that be hot? 67 uh, Fahrenheit, so that's really good. It's nice and cool. And then once the engine revs or you drive it more, it'll cool down even a little bit more. So that concludes this week's episode. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. A like, hey, I would like it even more. If you have a dislike, Keep it to yourself. That's it for now. Garage King over and out. Love you all. And uh, everyone, have a great day. Thank you.